Hello, Falcha. Welcome to the next episode of the Ton Bo Cunha, the Cattle Raid of Cooley, with myself, Laura O'Brien, where we are making our way through the epic tale that is the Ton. So we have been working through, if you have not, this is your first time with us and you've not seen any of the other episodes that we've done, then please go back. The, there's a whole playlist here on the YouTube channel and there will be It'll be popping up somewhere on the screen there um, very shortly, so you can go and check the whole playlist. But today we are going to start with the tooth fight of Fintan. Here followeth the tooth fight of Fintan. Fintan, himself the son of Neil Neve Glanach of the brilliant exploits, exploits from Dunaben was father of Cahern, son of Fintan, and he came to save the honour of Ulster and to avenge his son upon the hosts. Thrice fifty was his number, and thus it was they came, and two spearheads on each shaft with them, a spearhead on the top and a spearhead at the butt, so that it made no difference whether they wounded the host with the points or with the butts. They offered three battles to the hosts, and thrice their own number fell at their hands, and there fell also the people of Fintan, son of Neil, all excepting Fintan's son, Crimhan, alone. This one was saved under a canopy of shields by Alil and Maeve. Then said the men of Aaron, it would be no disgrace for Fintan, son of Neil, to withdraw from the camp and quarters, and they would give up Crimhan, son of Fintan, to him, and then the hosts would fall back a day's march to the north again and that he should cease from his deeds of arms against the hosts till he would come to encounter them on the day of the great battle at the place where the four grand provinces of Aaron would clash at Garrick and Ilgarrick in the battle of the cattle reaving of Cunha, as was foretold by the druids of the men of Aaron. Fintan, son of Neil, consented to that, and they gave over his son to him. He withdrew from the camp and station, and the host marched a day's journey back to the north again to stop and cease their advance. In this manner they found each man of the people of Fintan, son of Neil Neve Glonach, and each man of the men of Aaron, with the lips and the nose of each of them in the teeth and the tusks of the other. The men of Aaron gave thought to that. This is a tooth fight for us, said they the tooth fight of Fintan's people and of Fintan himself. So this is the tooth fight of Fintan. Now, this to me seems like some weird old Danielica's name that has been explained by adding it into the ton. And we have seen quite a bit of that. So um, that is how this is reading to me, at least. 23a, the red shame of men followeth here. It was then came to them great men, son of Salcolga, he from Rena, the waterways of the Boyne in the north. That's the river Boyne that flows by in the through the Boyne Valley by uh, Bruna Boyne in Newgrange. Twelve men with many pointed weapons, that was his number. It was thus they came, and two spearheads on each shaft with them, a spearhead on the top and a spearhead at the butt so that it made no difference whether they wounded the host with the points or with the butts. They've obviously learned a thing or two. They offered three attacks upon the hosts. Three times their own number fell at their hands, and there, tw there fell twelve men of the people of men. But men himself was sorely wounded in the strait, so that blood ran crimson on him. Then said the men of Aaron, Red is this shame, said they, for men is son of Salcholga, that his people should be slain, and destroyed, and he himself wounded till blood ran crimson upon him. Hence here is the reddening shame of men. Then said the men of Aaron, it would be no dishonour for men, son of Salcholga, to leave the camp and quarters, and that the hosts would go a day's journey back to the north again, and that men would cease his weapon feats on the host till Concor arose out of his pains, and battle would be offered them at Garrick and Ilgarrick, as the druids and soothsayers and the knowers of the men of Aaron had foretold it. 
So the pains being referred to there is the um, the pangs of the Ulstermen. So that's the curse of Macha that the Ulstermen, well, Connor at least has not uh, recovered from at this point. Men, son of Salcolga, agreed to that to leave the camp and halting place. And the host fell back a day's march or to rest and wait. And men went his way to his own land. And here followeth the accoutrement of the charioteers. Then came the charioteers of the Ulster men to them. Thrice fifty was their number. They offered three battles to the hosts. Thrice their number fell at their hands, and the charioteers themselves fell on the field whereon they stood. Hence this here is called the accoutrement of the charioteers. Brackets with stones. Yeah, these all seem like weird place names or really old stories that are kind of being mushed together in the town to explain a few things. And we'll finish with this one for today. 23C, the white fight of Rucha now followeth. Rucha Rejarig, Red King, son of Fathamon, was of Ulster. Thrice fifty warriors was his number, and he took possession of a hill fronting the hosts. Finnabar, daughter of Alil and Maeve, perceived that, and she went to speak to her mother thereof, even to Maeve. Truly have I loved yonder warrior for a long time, said she, and it is he is my sweetheart, and mine own choice, one in wooing. And thou hast so loved him, daughter, quoth Alil and Maeve, Sleep with him this night and crave for us a truce of him for the hosts until he encounters us on the day of the great battle when four of the grand provinces of Erin will meet at Garrick and Ilgarrick in the battle of the foray of Cunha. So obviously we're building up to this um, meeting at Garrick and Ilgarrick. Rocha, son of Fathamon, accepted the offer and that night the damsel slept with him. An under king of Munster that was in the camp heard the tale. He went to his people to speak of it. Yonder maiden has plighted to me on fifteen, was, sorry, my apologies, was plighted to me on fifteen hostages once long ago, said he. And it is for this I have now come on this hosting. Now, wherever it happened that the seven under kings of Munster were, what they all said was that it was for this there they were come. Why, said they, should we not go to avenge our wife and our honour on the main, who are watching and guarding the rear of the army at Imlach in Glendamrock, Kettle Glen's navel? This was the course they resolved upon. And with their seven divisions of thirty hundreds they rose. Alil arose with thirty hundred after them. Maeve arose with her thirty hundred. The sons of Maga with theirs and the Leinster men and the monster men and the people of Tara. And a mediation was made between them so that each of them sat down near the other and hard by his arms. Howbeit, before the intervention took place, 800 very valiant warriors of them had fallen. Finnebar, Finnebar, daughter of Alil and Maeve, had tidings that so great a number of the men of Erin had fallen for her sake and on account of her. I'm sure it was really her fault. I mean given that story and her heart broke in her breast even as a nut through shame and disgrace so that Finnevar Schleva, Finnevar of the Mount is the name of the place where she fell, died and was buried. Then said the men of Aaron, white is this battle said they for Rocha son of Fathamon in that 800 exceeding brave warriors fell for his sake and on his account and he himself goes safe and whole to his country and land without bloodshedding or reddening on him. Hence this is the white fight of Rocha. Now, and thus ends the daughter of Alil and Maeve. So we're going to leave it there for today and we'll pick it up again next week and hope you enjoyed that story. Make sure that you like the video, subscribe to the channel and hit the bell for notifications, please. And make sure you tell the YouTube algorithm and me that you're enjoying these videos. OK, comment below and let me know. It's long before and I will see you in the next video.